It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Elizabeth City State Sports Information Director, Shaylin Moore. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Brandon? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to become a sports information director? Um, well, honestly, I wouldn't say that I always knew. Um, prior to attending college, I loved sports, um, but I didn't really realize that there was a place for women actually to work behind the scenes and do all the dirty work in sports um, and really run things. Once I got into college, I started interning, writing um, for this newspaper as a sports writer. And then what I did, I was a communications major, but I decided to take all my electives in sports management. And it was my freshman year that I realized, okay, I can be in the communications field and have sports. So basically I realized I could have the best of both worlds. Um, and then as I continued interning with athletics, I realized that I liked sports information. I liked how you literally get to do just about everything from game day operations to writing the stories, to creating content, to streaming, every aspect of communications we touch and it goes through us. Um, so that's when I pretty much realized that that's what I wanted to do. Can you talk about, of course, what is the day in the life of a sports information director? That's a loaded question, Brandon. The day in the life of a sports information director is wearing about a hundred hats and figuring ways to get it all done. So let's pretend it's a game day. I'm writing the pre and post game stories, creating the graphics. I do all the video editing um, from for athletics. I create the videos. I do the interviews, um, game day operations, making sure that everyone is in place. I have someone working the stream, the announcer. Sometimes if an announcer doesn't show up, you're the announcer. So it's just making sure that you can be a chameleon and expect fires, be there to put out the fires. And you know, you're know you in charge of game day from start to finish, making sure that even after game days are over, you're submitting in your conference player of the week nominations. You're making sure that you are positioning the brand and your student athletes to get exposure by nominating them for awards, whether it's with the NCAA, the CIAA or your school or conference. Um, so it's a, it's a 24 seven job that a lot of people really don't know how much work one or two people do. Um, At my university, I'm the only sports information director. I I don't have an assistant. So it's a lot, but I mean, I love it. It's not never a dull moment. Um, So yeah. Can you talk about, of course, serving as a liaison between, of course, the coaches and athletes, along with the media? Yes. So communication is very important. And that's all within that role of serving as a liaison. Um, So there are things that I have to communicate to the coaches, the players. Um, I also serve as a bridge for the university's communications and athletics um, because in a essential, the university has their communications people and then I'm responsible for any communications with the athletics. So I'm that bridge that if we have an event going on that's university related and they want to collaborate with athletics, I'll make sure that from our side, we are executing whatever that ask is so that we can make sure we have that visibility um, and that collaboration with university departments. And I mean, it's great. It gets, gives you the opportunity to really get to know the student athletes outside of you know their sport and what they're doing, but to actually invest in seeing who they are and trying to help them not only graduate, but ensure their careers after ECSU. Can you talk about, of course, your time as a student athlete academic success? Coach. Yeah, success coach. Yes. So for a very short time, I was a student athlete academic success coach. Um, It was new for me. I had never worked in, I guess, the academic success side of athletics, Um, but it's something that I know I could be good at. I just know for me personally as a student, and I'm still a student getting my PhD, um, I value academics. I value performing well in school and I see the value of how it has helped me in every role that I get after. Um, So that's something that I think 
athletics needs a very strong focus on because sometimes student athletes they have so much pressure just trying to perform and do their sport that academics, if there's not someone pushing them, if there's not that extra support that they need, that can fall to the side. So um, it was very a uh, very great experience. And I think it made me a well-rounded individual to work in athletics because I can you know, push that value and support in any role. You don't have to have the role of a student athlete academic success coach to be that person in a student athlete's life or to be that person for your department. Um, so I valued it. Can you talk about a course in 2018 and 19? You worked with the Washington Redskins in the media relations. What was that like for you? So that was a very um, grateful opportunity. I actually did game day. So it was kind of like a graduate assistantship internship with public relations for game days. It was eye-opening. Um, it was one of those experiences that taught me next level sacrifice. Um, all of the other interns or people that were participating lived in Maryland. Um, they lived pr pretty close to the stadium. However, I lived in Virginia. And so I would drive there as early as 5, 6 a.m. Um, to get there because we always had to be there three hours before kickoff to prepare. So I would leave at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., drive there stay at the stadium for 10 hour game days, post game interviews with um, the head coaches and players. And then I would drive back to Virginia most game days, which is another three hour drive, not including traffic. So it taught me next level commitment. Um, I had an amazing mentor that worked with the Redskins. Um, his name was Zena Lewis. And I just felt like if he could meet me and take a chance on me and say, yes, I'm gonna get you these opportunities, then I could sacrifice I could lose sleep. I could make that drive and be able to show him that his yes wasn't a wasted yes and that I appreciated the opportunity. So I kind of just did what I had to do. Um, and then keep in mind, I worked regular jobs. So, and I was in school. So Monday morning, it was back to work for me despite that because I asked for it. So I think um, I've learned, I won't com complain about having too much on my plate because at some point I ask for everything that's on my plate. So it's my job to eat it because there's always someone else behind me that's begging for what's on my plate. So if I don't eat it, the next person's gonna come and they're gonna eat it, so. Can you talk about of course, as whenever you were at public relations, what is the big difference between of course, being a public relations in the NFL versus a sports information director on the college level? Honestly, there probably is no difference in if I would have to say from what I've seen, depending on where you're a sports information director at, there is a very different dynamic. So um, NFL teams, they have supporting staff, they have internship programs where they have more support. Um, so they actually have a great team of people and their media relations staff, that's their focus. There's someone, a whole nother team that does graphics. There are, there's a whole nother team that does videos and editing there's a whole nother team that all they focus on is community engagement. Whereas a college sports information director, we're wearing all those hats and we're doing all those things and getting it done. Um, some schools may have a, more staff than others, but either way, we're, we're sometimes under-resourced, we're sometimes understaffed and we still get the job done. We still find ways to keep up with what's new and exciting in media. And so I think that those are the things that are sometimes overlooked or underappreciated in um, college sports information director. And that's at every level. Can you talk about, of course, your time at Virginia State University? Yes. So I received two degrees from VSU. That's my alma mater where I got my bachelor's, where I got my bachelor's and master's. And it was an amazing experience from the connections, the networking, the people I've met, the support system that I walked away with for a lifetime. Um, I'm still an active member of my alumni chapter. I serve as the secretary, but the relationships I built there are, you know, lifelong sustaining relationships where when I need something, they're always there supporting me. If I'm doing something, Virginia State people are the first people that I see retweeting, shouting me out, like reaching out to me. Um, so it's always important. Some of my best friends for life will be there. Um, I've had professors there that are unlike any other professor I've met to where they really invested time and resources and saw something in me. And so those professors like, um, just to name a few, Dr. Leon Bay, 
Dr. Conway, they really made sure that as long as I worked for what I wanted, they were going to get me that exposure. So those things I can never repay BSU for. Um, and it definitely set the foundation. That's so wonderful. What is the process like, of course, for members of the media, such as me, who has a podcast, to get coaches on like their podcasts? Uh, so the first thing I would suggest you doing is if there's a school that you're interested in, for example, if you wanted to cover an ECSU game, head over to the ECSU website, look at there should always be somewhere that might say media credentials or inquiries or something. Each school words it differently, but it's essentially the same thing, but see what's the criteria, what are they asking you for, and try your best to submit that if you have questions or need to know where to submit it, always contact the sports information director. Um, Hopefully they get back to you in good timing, but that's the best way to go about it because what happens is um, sometimes we're bombarded with requests and it might just be people who want to get in a game for free or it might just be people who are not necessarily looking to cover the sport or to shine light on the athletic department or that student athletes. So it's just a way to organize that and have some structure, but um Definitely do it that way and you should be fine. Definitely use those type of experiences and opportunities because just like the media needs us to cover stories and content, we need you all. So um, it's very encouraged that schools and podcasts and media outlets do reach out. Can you talk about, of course, your time at Elizabeth City and what you have accomplished so far? Sure. So um, I this is my second year as a sports information director at Elizabeth City State University. Um, I would have to first and foremost say this is my first actual sports information job that I'm the sports information director. So I'll always be forever grateful that um, Elizabeth City offered me the opportunity, took a chance on me and allowed me to get my start there. Um, I went in and I saw opportunity. I saw opportunity to do things differently. I saw opportunity to enhance and develop the student athlete experience as well as the brand image. And that's just what I've been working hard to do, whether it's improving the streaming um, that we offer right now. Of course, we're not streaming anything because we're not playing, but just making sure that I'm utilizing this time to come back from this pandemic break, so to say, and make sure that we've upped our stake and what you see and experience is better. Um, I, I just thought it was a good opportunity, good timing, um, great location, and I look forward to continuing there. As you talked about, you, of course, y'all aren't playing due to y'all opting out of the season. How has that helped you and to learn, of course, the sports information area and better, basically better to get the brand out there? Yes, so um, that's actually a great question. So I've really been prioritizing some things during this pandemic break that sometimes when we're going season after season, game day after game day, not really having that time to just slow down and say, hey, I wanna try this. I'm using this time to incorporate some of that. So I get to tell stories of student athletes that normally I may not get to explore. Um, I'm getting to push out content that tells the ECSU story from a tradition standpoint. I'm getting to, um, this fall, I went and sat down in the homes of Hall of Famers. They're older, they've put in so much time and tradition and they still give back to their university. So it was important for me to sit down with those people and say, I'm not coming here to ask you for anything. I wanna hear your story. I care about you and what you have given to your university. So it's actually having the time to sit down and slow down and do those things. And then most importantly, I'm using this time to prepare. Um, it's not just idle time of there's no games. What do we have that I wanted to develop and make better that I didn't have the time to do and how can I do that now? So I'm learning new skills. Um, I'm creating things so that when we are back, we'll have the things that we need and I'll have the things that I need to say we were here this last year, now we're there because we've utilized that time to the, our best of our abilities. Um, it's honestly just a moment. The pandemic is a moment. Unfortunately, it's a moment that has halted and shifted the way we do things, but it's just a moment in our marathon. So when we get back and we're up and running, I know that we will be a better and more enhanced department as a whole. That's amazing. Of course, during the interview with coaches and stuff, can you talk a little bit about what coaches can say on and what they can't say, like whenever it comes to like recruitment and anything in general? 
Hmm. You asked that question a little sketchy there, but no. Um, First and foremost, I cannot say what a coach can and can't say because everyone is grown and they're accountable for their own um, actions. And we just have to have faith that our coaches know what's acceptable and appropriate and what's not and that they will always conduct themselves in that manner. Um, I will look over talking points. I will encourage, you know, try to steer away from this, but ultimately, um, I trust that our coaches know what to say, know what to do, and that they won't do anything or say anything that paints our institution or our conference in a bad light. And um, we have amazing coaches, so that's never really a huge issue. Um, realistically, there are times where everyone in the world may have things they want to say, but we all know how to go about those things to make sure that we're handling them in the most professional and correct way. Um, but I think sometimes from your aspect, there may be some things that interviewers or podcast hosts and show hosts maybe should or shouldn't say. Because, you know, sometimes media people can poke the bear. So um, there's another way to look at it. Can you talk about, of course, whenever you're talking about recruitment wise, what can coaches, of course, say about recruitment? Um, so there's a thing such as recruitment periods, um, coaches can always speak to recruiting um, because that's a part of their role to recruit, to improve the brand image, promote their program. Um, as long as they're making sure that whatever compliance guidelines that have been sent down by the NCAA incorporated by the conference, as well as implemented by the institution they're abiding by. So that may consist of timelines where you can only contact students in a certain manner that may consist of refraining from contact or refraining from having student athletes come to an event or as a means to recruiting them. So there are certain guidelines that coaches are well versed with and um, there are compliance people at each institution that are basically the overseers and umbrella of all that to make sure that the entire uh, athletic department is compliant with what the NCAA has in instituted. What advice would you have upcoming sports information directors looking to get started? The best advice I would have is to find ways to learn. Sometimes that looks like volunteering, do it. Sometimes that looks like taking an unpaid internship, do it. Um, sometimes that will open up doors to a paid graduate assistantship, do it. I've been there. I've sat in every one of those seats. I've walked in every shoe. Um, I did it because I saw the value in the experiences. It helps you learn different things so that when your time comes, yes, there will be things for you to learn. I'm still learning, but I don't ever want to reach a place in life where I'm not learning. Um, so I welcome that challenge, but find those experiences and take them. Um, make sure that you're soaking it all in, be a sponge, network and connect with genuine people that want to see you win. And they are genuine and authentic in that they, um, they're not bringing anything negative negative to your space. They're uplifting you. There are amazing people in this industry. I've been able to be mentored by so many, um, so many that pour into me. And I appreciate those people because as with everything, there are people that are going to be the complete opposite, but you have to just make sure that those aren't the people that you allow, allow to decide your fate and you keep pushing, getting the experience. Um, and I would definitely say, teach yourself. So some things I literally had to sit down and teach myself. But when I actually became a sports information, the things that I taught myself, like how to create a graphic or um, how to video edit, those things that I either taught myself or learned through school, those are the things that now I can say, we don't have to spend money on, I can do that. Now, sometimes will it overload my plate? Yes, but I'm able to be an asset to my team because that's a fee or a cost that you were paying for in the past that you no longer have to pay for unless we absolutely need it. Um, so just get the experiences. If it's really what you want, understand that it's not going to come easy. And even when you become a sports information director, it's never going to get easier because the field that we work in between sports and communications and media, there's always innovation. There's always the next best thing. So it's never going to get easier because then there's always an older fan base that likes the traditional stuff. So you have digital, new media, traditional, modern, and they expect you to, you know, do it all. So just be prepared. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with, of course, the program? 
the athletic awesome. program have? So my Facebook is just my name. And then on um, Twitter, I am what just say underscore Shay. So that's W-A-T-C-H-A underscore S-H-A-Y. It was a, I made the name a long time ago and I just stuck with it because it was a song that I liked. Um, but that's where you can find me on Twitter and Facebook. And um, definitely if anyone needs an internship, if you're a college student that's interested in a virtual internship right now, I would have the opportunity for a virtual experience. Um, but yes, I guess that answers your question. Thank you again, Sh Shaylin, for your interview and best of luck in your future at Elizabeth City State. Thank you so much, Brandon, and best of luck to you in your future endeavors. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And then you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Shaylin, for your interview and best of luck. No problem. Same to you, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.